Let's turn all this useless scrap into something useful. The Empire Abrasives Black Hawk Flap Disc makes quick work of that. Okay, next step.
So the height of the shaft I want is not long enough, so um, I need to add a little piece to it. So this is stainless. Um, I got a um, piece of uh, angle magnetic down to the, uh, the Harbor Freight welding table, and then just so I get good fit up here. And then I have, a, I have it clamped with a strong hand clamp down to the table. So we're going to take this up here and give us that extra four and a half inches that I want. Next step, we're going to weld the plates that we cut out and the ground to the top of this rotor. video I realized my SD card filled up and stopped recording. Total bozo move on my part guys, sorry about that. But I'd still like to take you through uh, the rest of the build and some of the things I did to the top plate that you might find interesting. So uh, the last clip you saw was Philip welding the column to the top plate. So I'll bring you in tight and show you what we did from there. We then welded the stainless steel column to the plasma cut piece and this piece as you saw in the previous video was welded to the brake rotor. Uh, these brake rotors came off my uh, Toyota Tundra uh, a couple years back so we repurposed them. So after uh, all the welding was completed I took this uh, two flute spiral step bit and drilled the 7 8 inch hole right down the center. 
and I'll explain in a little bit why I did that. Uh, then what I really wanted to show was, I'm sure you guys have done this before, but I power tapped these two quarter 20 holes with this. Uh, made it really quick and simple and works like a charm, man. So after power tapping these and the hole was drilled, uh, I'll show you what I did. So I got a whole bunch of this uh, lead shot. And I've had it laying around the shop for a long time. I've just been using it little by little and stuff. So the purpose of the hole was so I could throw a funnel in here and fill up, fill up these things with some lead shot. Uh, as much or as little as you want. Just to add a little more stability, a little bit more weight in, in the bottom of your, uh, your stand. Um, I've already put a few pounds in this one, and I put a few pounds in all the other ones, too. So, uh, let's throw the uh, buffer on this, and I'll show you them all lined up. I'm handheld here, so I'll try to keep it steady, but uh, there's the lineup. Uh, two of these rotors are off the back of the Tundra, and the third one is on the front, and I have a fourth one that I haven't completed yet because I'm not sure what I want to put on it yet. But uh, I have the Baldor grinder here with a wire brush and a pretty coarse grinding wheel. I think it's a 60 or 80, I'm not sure. And then I have an old school Harbor Freight grinder that has a uh, um, less coarse grinding wheel and a green wheel for sharpening the high speed steel bits. And then I got an open wire brush here, a uh, deep burring wheel on the other side of this little bell door, and then this is the Harbor Freight buffer. Uh, inexpensive buffer, and you know, I got to give it a thumbs up. It works pretty damn good. So uh, I got one more thing to share with you before we close this video out. There's another shot of the bases. So a good friend gave me two of these uh, semi-truck trailer uh, brake drums. These suckers weigh about 120 pounds, man. So uh, I'll show you what I did with the other one. So one of my Wilton Vices needed a new home. So here it is. And basically I did the same thing. Stainless column. Plasma cut that circle out. Welded it in on the inside, plasma cut that top plate, and mounted the vise right to it. And there we have a nice stable platform for the Wilton vise. I hope you enjoyed this little project as much as I did. So some new build projects coming soon. Until then, see ya!